This episode is brought to you by A3, a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, otherwise known as an OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant RPOs and assessor C3PAOs. Hey everybody, and welcome back to 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I will be your host today. And our special guest is Ross Sprouse, and his company is Continuous Networks. So today we are going to talk about how we can help these small and medium businesses with their technology and compliance. So Ross, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your company? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, we are a technology service provider. Some people know the acronym MSP for managed service provider. We've been in business for about 20 years, uh, focused on building a lot of large networks. And then eventually we got into really focusing on cybersecurity and compliance. Uh, we cater mostly to manufacturing, wholesale construction, and we also uh, do medical and healthcare. So we understand really that, you know, technology is just kind of a confusing thing for a lot of these businesses. And oftentimes if, you know, you're a CEO or a CFO, there's just really no visible ROI. Uh, so we, we're there to really give the playbook to these organizations to help them understand those things. When you say it in a short, in short form, really what we do is you give us what you spend on technology how you spend it, and we give you the software, the systems, and the support to really understand how to achieve better business results. Things like higher employee efficiency, higher profitability, lower overall costs, et cetera. That sounds like a good way to go about that because sometimes they really don't even know exactly what they are doing, what they are paying for. So if they can do some research, gather that all together and say, here, this is what we're doing. This is how much money we are spending. And then you can kind of go through and say, well, maybe we should do this and maybe we shouldn't do this. And so that that's a good way to get an initial approach, which leads us to our next question was how, how is it that you help them? Right. Well, and, and we understand that they really just don't know how to do this. And, and why should they? They've got a business that they have to focus on. You know, how could they ever know how to make the decisions to get the best tools and the best processes and then get it at the right price? And even, even if they do make good decisions around that, how do they know how to properly implement them? How do they know how to get the best business result from them? I think, you know, if you look at it, a lot of businesses are just now starting to implement things like MFA, encryption, training programs, uh, but nearly all of them are spending at least some kind of substantial amount of money on cyber defense in one way or another. So, you know, when I walk into a lot of these businesses, I, I take a look at them and I see that most of them are just doing it incorrectly, whether it's they're overpaying for the tool or they've got the wrong set of tools or there's a lot of overlap or they're just wasting money on things because somebody, some software company somewhere has sold them on the idea that this is going to solve all their problems. And so I see a lot of wasted technology spend. Some, <clears throat> sometimes it's in the tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars that I see them wasting. And really what we have done is boiled that down into a way to make it really simple for them to understand. Even if they've got um, existing IT people who, who work for them, that's okay too, because we show them that plan, we give them that way to solve a lot of those problems and do it at the right price. And let me ask you, how do you can talk to or convey from the IT department to the regular non-technical employees what you're trying to, to accomplish? Because I think a lot of people, they think, oh, well, we're just, the IT department's gonna take care of it and then we're all set. Right. Sure. Well, and, and, and I think that's one of the issues, too, with a lot of these companies is they hire a lot of technical people to be these firemen to go around and put out fires. And so that's just, that's their job. The printer's not working. My computer's running slow. I can't get on the Wi-Fi. My presentation doesn't work. Whatever it is, they're so busy running around stomping out all those issues that they don't they don't make the connection on, we need to make this human. We need to make this simple. We need to make this understandable for the end user. They've got a specific frustration, oftentimes that they don't voice. Uh, and that's you know one of the interesting questions I like to ask a lot of CEOs and CFOs as well is when I ask them, is their technology running well? And they say, yeah, I think it's fine. You know, No major issues. I ask them the question, well, what if I went around and asked all of your employees that question? <laughs> Would they agree with that statement? 
And that's usually an eye-opening thing. They're, they kind of think about that for a minute and go, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never asked them. So I think there's just so much inefficiency that, that hits all of these people. And then when you start to shove compliance down their throat, now you're giving them a whole new elephant that they have to eat. And it's really, really complicated and difficult. So we work with a lot of those teams to help them simplify that and give them very simple systems, make that, uh, give them training and, and guidance to be able to do that a lot more efficiently with those, those users. And that brings us to our next little bit is compliance. Is do they do they know if they what their compliance is? Are they following it? I mean, what's your experience with talking to some of these CEOs about this? Yeah, you know, it really depends. Obviously, if they're in the healthcare field, they understand uh, HIPAA high tech. They know that they've got those requirements. Whether they're abiding by them or not <laughs> is an entirely different situation. Um, we focus a lot on manufacturing, wholesale, and construction. Now, in our neck of the woods, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, pretty much every business has some resident who lives in the state of New York. And if that's the case and you're holding data on that resident, you're required by law to be compliant with the New York Shield Act. And a lot of them don't know this. Now, I run into bigger organizations, 500, 1,000 employees. They generally have a sense, at least today, because we are well into a year of the requirement now, uh, that New York Shield exists, but I, I still meet people every single week that go, oh, what's that? I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't understand that they have to have some basic level of hygiene from a cybersecurity perspective to be able to protect themselves against these types of compliance violations. And um, with New York Shield, it gets really serious because the way that you have to notify when a certain number of people are breached gets pretty extensive. There's even some higher levels where you actually have to uh, notify state and local media in addition to all the local authorities. So then your reputation's getting completely ruined at that point. So we guide them through a lot of those processes and first of all, give them the awareness. Do you know what New York Shield is? Here's the 15 things that you need to do so that you can be compliant with it. Listen, we've read the law. We've gone through it a hundred times. We work with a lot of vendors. We've gone through the training. We understand these processes. But I think once you start to explain that to them, they, they begin to understand it. It really, just like I said previously with HIPAA, comes down to whether or not they're gonna take it seriously. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good question to start with. Uh, are you, uh, do you have anybody in New York? And then as soon as they answer, oh yeah, yeah, we got this person in New York or that person in New York or that company in New York. And then you can kind of go into that little spiel. And if they don't have the shield, uh, in place, that's a good way, good selling feature for your company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually a good way to weed out the people who aren't gonna take it seriously and probably won't be a good fit because when they dismiss that like it means nothing, you go, okay, <laughs> my yeah. work here. And one thing that we've all learned is, is, you know, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And there are still many, many companies out there that they just, they don't wanna even know about any of this. They just want to wait until something happens and then they're going to deal with it. And that's yep. very unfortunate because most of those companies, if something does happen and they have either a ransomware attack or they have a data breach, they're going to be out of business within six months of that occurring. So that's yep. very unfortunate. Yep. Okay. So let's see here now. So um, how are we going to convince them that this is not just a cost, that this is going to somehow improve the, the net result of the business? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's funny because I think there's some good and some bad to the fact that the government is forcing these compliance requirements. Obviously, it's good because everybody's got to have at least that basic level of cybersecurity hygiene. But it's also bad because it's reinforcing this idea that um, IT is just this necessary evil. And I think that mentality is where a lot of the um, a lot of the reframing has to be done. We're not, technology is not just a bunch of guys running around putting out fires. It's gotta be strategic. The same way your accountant is, the same way your lawyer is, it's a strategic part of your business. And when used properly, you can actually get substantially better business results, whether it's higher profitability, you know, um, better employee efficiency. So the way we look at it is instead of shoving the compliance idea down their throat, I mean, we bring it up, it's important, but we take it and build it into a system, a process that they can utilize repeatedly. And that drives all of those better business results through the processes and systems we put in place. And along those same lines, they're getting their security risk assessments. So that's happening every quarter. They're able to see the reporting and we even will help them in the case that they have to go through an audit for New York Shield or HIPAA. We're right there working with our vendors and, and, and all of our IT people to make sure that we're able to show them all the documentation that's been done, all the record keeping that's been done. And so that makes them feel a little bit more protected, they get a little bit better sleep at night, not having to worry about it as much. And at the same time going, well, listen, you know, I've, I've got my employees who are significantly more effective now. 
I know the stat that that I've read uh, through most of my research is that the average employee is about 45% efficient. So if you think about that from a cost perspective, if you're able to even get them to 55 or 65, that's driving productivity out of your business and that's making a huge impact to your margins, which is the concern of every CEO and CMO. So let me ask you, some of your clients, are they uh, DOD contractors? We don't work with any DOD contractors yet today, but I have a very strong belief that um, some type of CMMC requirement, even if it's just level one, is going to be blanket across most of the country. When you do New York Shield, that's pretty much CMMC level one. Okay. And, and I, you know, COPRA was um, legislation of, which was nationwide, fell apart, but that was a couple of years ago. So I think it's only a matter of time. California's done their Consumer Privacy Act, New York's got New York Shield, and we're just seeing this stuff pop up all over the place. So I think whether you're a DOD contractor or not, you really have to look at this stuff uh, and, and start taking it seriously. I know I think it's 2025 is the requirement uh, for full CMMC compliance. But all these companies are, are coming under the microscope. You know, New York Shield was a year ago and, and a lot of them still don't know about it. Okay. So I think they've got to take it seriously. I personally really like CMMC because I like its level, its tiered system. I like how you can sort of start and then build upon that as you want to achieve those higher levels of compliance. So that's the way that we're, we're positioning them. And I think, like you said, regardless if it's called CMMC, if it's called whatever, Right. These are just good business practices that we really need to be putting into place. I mean, the world is a cyber world that we live in, and there are bad guys out there that are trying to do malicious things, and that's never going to go away. So it's time for us to embrace it and make it a cultural change within all these organizations and, uh, you know, kind of move forward and with whatever compliance winds up coming down, down the road. Bob. Yep. And, and Dana, that's the key. I think you said it right there. It's the cultural change that needs to take place. And whoever you're working with has got to be somebody who understands that and can help your organization make that cultural shift to achieve that higher level of cybersecurity maturity. Like that, that's just where your head's got to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So what advice do we have relative to rising costs, shrinking margins and all this confusion with the technology requirements? Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's frustrating, right? And then the more we sit here and talk about things like compliance and cybersecurity, it just makes your head spin. Sometimes it makes my head spin talking about it. I'm like, oh, I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, but I think whether you have the technology staff or you don't really doesn't really doesn't matter. You've got to be open to the idea of making that cultural shift to be strategic. IT is not a tactical positioning, it, it's, it's strategy, and you've got to think about it in a proactive nature. And that's the biggest problem that is impacting businesses today. Everything was, is reactive. We talked about this 10 years ago, 15 years ago with backups, and they said, well, I've never lost my data. I'm not going to back it up yet. Now you can't walk into a company that doesn't have backups. They'd never even hear about it. What's the difference between backing up your data and protecting your data from, from hackers? Mm -hmm. There isn't any. Uh, in fact, now it's even worse because you have ransomware. <laughs> you can get ransomed, which is ridiculous. So it's just a matter of understanding that you've got to be more strategic and more pre proactive with your entire approach to technology. And you've got to be working with a, a group of IT people, whether they're in-house, whether they're outsourced or a combination of the two that have that mentality in mind. Mm -hmm. And also making sure that you're communicating to the people on the front line that are answering the phone, that are using email, that you know really may have nothing to do with the IT department, but these are the people that are causing a lot of the problems. They say 85% yeah. of these problems are caused by you know the non-technical folks. So we definitely need to make sure that we are getting down to them with some kind of either basic, you know, even just starting a conversation within the organization, saying, "Hey, everybody, you know, we're gonna we're gonna start focusing on all of us understanding a little bit about cybersecurity." Just yeah. there, yeah, you, you, you're better than before. You said that, you know. So yeah. anyway, I'm always very. Yeah, passionate. I mean, hundred percent. I I like to think of it as the three basic things that if you're not doing, you are in trouble, and that's multi-factor authentication, encrypting your devices, um, and end user training and awareness. Most of Windows today comes with a semi-decent endpoint software. So if you're not doing those other three things, you're in serious trouble. And they're easy things to do. They're not expensive things to do. Everybody should be doing them at this point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to share with everybody? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you happen to be in the New York, New Jersey area and, you know, you're interested in learning more about it, I'm, I'm always uh, open to talk with people and, and help them to educate. I'm very big on awareness and education. That's that's what I spend my time doing out on LinkedIn, um, similar to you, Dana. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always here as a resource for anybody who's looking for more information. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for all your time, Ross. We much appreciate that. A lot of good stuff here. And uh, again, reach out to Ross on LinkedIn. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn and we can connect over there. And we hope that you'll join us the next time on the next episode. So thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks. This episode of 123 CMMC has been brought to you by A3, an assessment accreditation application developed by CyberDI. A3 is a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant, RPOs, and assessor C3PAOs. Mm -hmm.